come in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate God and our pastors and the leaders for this opportunity again to bring God's word. And I pray that we will be blessed by His word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a topic before us that says breakthrough. Breakthrough. Can we sound it together? Breakthrough. One more time. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Before we dive into it, I don't know if anyone can remind us what we studied last week Sunday. What was our topic last week? Without flipping your manuals anyway. Anyone? Yes. The waiting room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anybody want to say one or two things that he or she learned last week from that powerful topic, the waiting room? Anybody? We didn't learn anything. Wow. Okay, maybe we don't want to say anything. Okay. For someone to wait at the waiting room, that means you have no choice. You have no alternative. Praise the Lord. And we should not try to help God. Exactly. You cannot help God in the actual sense. You can't help God. So when you are waiting, you have to be patient. And one word in the conclusion says that delay is not denial. Delay is never denial. It may be delayed, but if you are patient enough, definitely your change will come. I remember a drama I acted so many years ago. Waiting is not wasting. That was the title of the drama. Waiting is never wasting. You can, it, will take, it may take a lot of time. It may take a long time. But definitely, if you are patient enough to wait on God, God can never be late. And I pray that whatever it is we are waiting on God for, God will hastily bring it to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. I said, God will hastily bring it to pass in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this says, breakthrough. Breakthrough. What do we understand by the word breakthrough? Anybody? Breakthrough. Why are we are thinking about that? Our memory verse is Genesis 26, verse 22. It said, And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now, the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. I think that was the last prayer we prayed just now that God will make room for us and will be fruitful even in this land in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, according to the introduction, it says, Breakthrough is having phenomenal success in a, in a venture or project after efforts have been put in with the help of God's blessings. Underline the word God's blessing. Without whom we, we could do nothing. Phenomenal success. In other words, breakthrough is success, right? Yes, sir. When you have success in any venture, any project, after you have put in effort, I want us to pick the key words in this definition given to us. Phenomenal success, that's the aftermath. After your efforts have been put into it, with the help of who? God's blessings. That means without God's blessings on your efforts, you may not have breakthrough. You may not be successful. True or false? True or false? True. Without God's hand, without God's blessings on your efforts, you may not be successful. You may not have breakthrough. So it's having success in any venture or project after efforts have been put in with the help of God's blessings. Without whom we could do nothing. Proverbs 10, 22. Without God, we can do what? Nothing. nothing. Now, when we say divine breakthrough, in simple terms, that is heaven made manifest on earth. Divine breakthrough. Heaven manifested on what? On earth. So when I say I have God, I have divine breakthrough, it means God has showed up. Heaven has been made manifest in what? In my life on earth. Amen. Amen. Breakthrough is associated with prosperity, although it means different things to different people. Generally, Breakthrough means different things to what? To different people. It could be physical, financial, material, scientific, academic, business-wise, health-wise. It means different things to what? To different people, depending on the area where you need your breakthrough. You could also have spiritual breakthrough also. But today we'll be narrowing it 
deeply to their divine breakthrough, putting God into it, while we also touch it in other areas of our of our lives. I pray God helps us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now from scriptures, we'll be looking at people who had breakthroughs in the Bible. Examples of breakthroughs. Examples of breakthroughs. People who had breakthrough in the Bible, who God showed up for, who had success in their lives in what they did, and they ended up victorious. Now, the first person I have here is Moses. In the book of Exodus 14, verse 21 to 22, can we have that possible? Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. 22. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Now we know the story very well. When the children of Israel left Egypt, and afterwards, Pharaoh changed his mind and decided to pursue after them again to capture them. What happened? When they were running away from the chariots and the armies of Egypt, they came in face with what? The Red Sea. On their back was their enemy. At their front was the deep Red Sea. Beside them were mountains and hills that, you know, no way of escape. Now what happened? Moses heard from God and God told him to what? Stretch forth his rod towards the sea. And when he acted on that word, he obeyed. What happened? He saw the result. The Bible said the sea parted and the children of Israel walked on dry ground. They got victory. They got their breakthrough right there. Now, what led to that uh, manifestation because somebody heard from God and not just did hear from God, he acted on the word that was given to him obedience. So, the first thing we can say that will help us to get our breakthrough is what obedience. He heard God, he didn't just end there, he acted on the word. Simple instruction stretch forth your rod and the water will, you know, pathways. He did just that and they walked through what dry ground. Oh, yeah. The Red Sea parted and they walked on dry ground. There was breakthrough for them because Moses acted on the instruction he received from God. He obeyed God. So many of us we are clamoring for breakthrough in different areas of our lives, but we do not want to do that which God is telling us to do in regards to that situation. We can only have virtue when we hear God and act on the word that God has given to us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another um, example of people who had breakthrough in 2 Kings 7, verse 3. I'll try to be fast because of time. Okay, no time today. All right. <laughs> 2 Kings 7, verse 3. Said, now there are four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? Can we have verse 4? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. I don't want to go deep, deep down. I believe we should know this, this um, story of the four lepers. There was famine in the land, and the only place that there was food was in the camp of the Syrians, the army. And these four lepers stood up one day and said, and before now, remember that the prophecy was given that a, a uh, what's it called? Wheat of flour would be, be sold for a shekel of silver. And someone doubted it. And the man of God prophesied and said, because you doubted, your eyes will see, but your mouth will know what, will not eat it. Now these four lepers men stood up one day and said, if we stay here, we will die. If we go to the camp of the Syrians, we will die. If we stay here, famine will also work, we kill us. Let us go into there, at least we, we will die trying to get something to eat for ourselves. And they stood up and they moved. And as they were going to the camp of the Syrians, the Bible says that God amplified their feet. The Syrian army started to hear, you know, millions and thousands of chariots coming. 
to them and they were scared and like, ah, these people have gone to hire so many uh, chariots to come and fight against us. What happened? The Bible said they fled, left their gold, left their food, left everything, just the feet of four men. Because they took a decision to change their situation. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, you know, decide to stay where they have been and say, let us just die here. Some of us, ah, I don't know any is going to be, let it be. What are you doing about it? They decided to go up from where they have been. Say, if I die, I die. Esther said, if I perish, let me perish. But let me go, let me die while trying. And they stood and they left, they went there. And what happened? Because of their decision, God acted upon their action. And they had breakthrough. The Syrians, they had chariots of army marching towards them. They ran and they left. And when the lepers got there, they saw that the Syrian armies left everything. And they, ate, they took what they want, they ate to their satisfaction. They didn't stop there. They said, if we keep it all to ourselves, this will not be good. They went to the, the, the porters and told them about it. And they came and took you know, to the land. And the prophecy of the man of God came to pass that a, a, a wheat of flour was sold for a shekel of silver. Breakthrough came to pass because someone took a decision to change their situation. What is it that we are praying for? Or what is it that, which area of your life do you desire breakthrough? Now, what are you doing to get that success that you want? What decision have you taken to better your life? What decision have you taken? Are you just sitting down there folding your hands and say, what will happen will happen? They'll say, uh, is it, I must say the quote, they say, time and chance happen to them. Mm -hmm. Time and chance happen to them. You are just there. You are not doing anything about it, but you want breakthrough. You want success. They took decisions to work to better their lives. They left their comfort zone. They left where they have been and they moved. And God saw that and he acted on their action. And they got breakthrough. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another example we want to look at is Abraham. In Genesis 22 verse 15 to 18. This is another man that obeyed God in the Bible without blinking, without thinking twice. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven, sixteen please, and said, by, my, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. Your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. It said, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed. Can we echo that word? Because you have what? Obeyed my, my voice. Another man that obeyed God. Now, what is that thing that Abraham did? We all know the story how Abraham waited for a child for so many years, and at last the child came. And what did God say? That same child, give it back, give him back to me. If it were to be today, even me, I will not do. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. You, it. you, you will not do it. You will argue. You will rebuke it. <laughs> you will rebuke the I, voice. It's the truth. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's not try to be. No, we won't. But Abraham did not question God. He didn't ask God, God, this is the child I've been waiting for. Why do you want to? Why? Why did you give it to give him to me in the first place? If you know, you will take him back. The Bible said that he obeyed. He took the child and went to the place where God asked him to go. And all we know that though physically the knife did not get to Isaac's neck, but Isaac died. All we know yes. spiritually he sacrificed the child. We know the story. And because of that singular obedience, see the blessings that God released upon Abraham. He said, even down to your descendants. He said, I will bless you. Today we sing Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. What Abraham did, can you do it to get the blessings? It's not about singing it. What Abraham did, can you do it to get the blessings of Abraham? Obedience. Obedience to God's instruction or his word brings breakthrough. What have God told you to do? In regards to that thing you've been praying and asking for, it may be that your simple obedience is what is delaying it. 
it may be that your simple obedience to God's word is what is delaying the answer that you have been clamoring for. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham's obedience to God brought him blessings that even extended to his son, Isaac. In Genesis 26, verse 13 to 14, Isaac was another man who obeyed God. Genesis 26, verse 13 and 14, please. It said, the man began to prosper, that is Isaac, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. His prosperity, his breakthrough, his success were envied, was envied rather by the Philistines. Because of what? He had God and he obeyed the voice of God. There was famine in the land, and people were running away, leaving the land, but God said, stay, stay there, stay there. Stay in that land. He stayed. <laughs> in the same land where people, where there was famine, people were dying of hunger, a man was, was busy from prospering and acquiring wealth for himself because he listened. To the voice of God. Remember our definition that said success in any venture, together with your efforts, together with what God's blessings on it. So if you must have breakthrough or success in any area of your life, you must put God. You must put God. May God help us in Jesus' name. He obeyed God and the Lord blessed him and increasing in a land where there was famine and others and others were in want he had plenty the bible says he went forward until he became very great that even the philistines began to work in him i pray that in this land we will grow forward amen. and we will become very great amen. in the name of jesus amen. another example of a um, person that had virtue in the bible is solomon Second Chronicles 1, verse 6 to 12. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Solomon. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O oh Lord, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Thank you. Now, what happened? Solomon was the man that built the temple of God single handedly, according to instructions. He built the temple of God. And the Bible says that he, after building the temple of God, he went to the altar and offered sacrifices to God. He gave burnt offerings as his worship to God. And after he did that, that same night, God came down and gave him an open check. Ask, what do you want me to give to you? Ask, and what did Solomon ask for? If you tell today, what will we ask for? Money. <laughs> POS. <laughs> It is he asked for wisdom because he did what he, after building the temple of God, he made sacrifices to God. And that moved God to come to him at night and said, Ask what I, or ask anything you want, and I will give it to you. The Bible said he asked for wisdom. And together with wisdom, God gave him wealth, gave him everything. Everything. will not just happen on its own. You have your part to play. We see how these men obeyed God and acted on the word they received from God and they got their breakthrough. There are so many in the Bible, but because of time we can't begin to dig, dig, dig in and go deeper. Obedience, we can bring from these examples that these men had God and they obeyed him. They acted on the word that they received from God and they got their breakthrough. 
It may be God has been speaking to you regards that situation. Do this particular thing, but you have decided to not listen. And that is why they're delaying the breakthrough. That is why they're delaying in the success that you are looking for. Obedience to God's word. Obedience to his instruction. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, breakthrough also cuts across, let's leave the divine breakthrough now, also cuts across other areas of our lives. Like I said, it requires your own effort. You have your own part to play when you want breakthrough. There's a, a lady, I don't know if you know her, Vicky James. She is a fashion designer, and recently she just did a short movie on her life, how God has helped her, and she started from, I think the title is from Ajegule to Forbes. She's been shown on Forbes today. When I was watching the highlights of that video, I saw somebody who started very small, who had a dream, started from her lower state, but today she's no longer where she used to be. She's no longer where she used to be. Now what happened? She put in all her efforts, she did her part, hard work, she planned, she, she waited, she persevered, you know? Even when it was not favorable, even when it was not coming out the way she wanted, she kept up striving to be better. And today she's been celebrated. You want to do well academically, you have your own part to play. Manna will not fall from heaven, those days are gone. Manna will not come down, heaven will not come and help you. You have your own part to play if you want breakthrough, if you want success. You want to do well academically, don't fold your hands. Don't play when others are studying. Don't be lazy when others are putting in hard work. And when, when the results will come, you say, let's remember them in school. Somebody will say, lecturer are just failing. Not the lecturer are failing. You failed. Because you didn't read. Lecturer, did not, lecturer cannot just fail you. Let sure I just fail me. Let sure I not fail you. You fail. <laughs> exactly. So console. Let sure I not fail you. You fail. It is what you gave. That's what they gave you back. It is garbage in garbage. You want to succeed academically. You want breakthrough. You want success. You want to be like those people who are being celebrated today. And you are folding your hands. You are doing nothing about it. Where others are putting in hard work, you are just there. Thinking God will come and help you. No. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. That was why I took time to explain the definition. Success in projects. After efforts, your efforts have been put into it together with God's blessings. That's what brings breakthrough. You want to start up a business. You are not ready to be patient. You are not ready to put in the hard work into the business for you to succeed. You just want to wake up and have business like Dan Gauthier tomorrow. No, it doesn't work that way. Those people that are being celebrated today, if you look at where they started from, if you look at where they started from, you will know that these persons are putting so much hard work into whatever they have today. Now, I brought out some principles of breakthrough. Have a close relationship with God. Only a man who is close to God can hear from God, receive instructions from, from God, and can obey them. Have a close relationship with God. From the examples we, we, we saw from the Bible, these men had close relationship with God. This is why they could hear God speak. God can give you a divine idea. That will, you know, to you it may not even be what kind of idea it is, but when you follow that idea that God has given you, it will launch you into, into a realm where you never expected to see yourself. Oh, yeah. Have a close relationship with God so you can receive instructions from Him, you can receive words from Him, and obey every instruction God gives to you. Number two, I said connect with the right people. Connect with the right people. You want to be successful, but the people around you are all unsuccessful people. You want to do well, you want to, you know, become great in life, but people around you are people who are not ready. People who are not ready, I don't want to use a negative word, people who are not ready for, for life or for future. These are people that you move with. You can't go anywhere. You remember where you are. You remember where you are. 
Connect with the right people. That feed where you want breakthrough, you want to succeed in. Look for people who have succeeded in that area, in that feed, and learn from them. Amen. Amen. Learn from them. Connect with the right people. Make necessary plans and put in all the efforts that is required. You want success, you want breakthrough, is it in your academics? Even spiritual breakthrough. Make necessary plans and put in all the efforts that is required. Be hard working. Stay positive with your words. Use your words rightly. Some persons want to have breakthrough, they want to succeed, but all the words that keeps coming out from their mouth, negative words. And I'm a person who loves declaration very much because there's, the Bible says there's power in our tongue. I love using my words rightly. I may not be seeing what I'm speaking, but do you know what? That in due, in due time, these words will be made manifest. Use your words rightly. The last one I said here is learning. Acquire knowledge. You want to go into a business venture, acquire the right knowledge. You want to go through a career path, acquire the right knowledge. No man is an island of himself. And we do not stop learning. The day a man dies, that's the day he stops learning. We keep on learning. We learn, we unlearn, and we relearn. We keep on learning. So if you want to, if you want breakthrough, if you want success, you must follow these principles. Now, how do you get how do you get breakthrough? John chapter 15, verse 1. How do you get breakthrough? Can we have John 15 1, please? He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Let's have Psalm 37, verse 4 also. Psalm 37, verse 4. How do we get breakthrough? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall what? Give you the desires of your heart. Stay connected to the vine if you want breakthrough. If I should take the microphone round and ask each and every one of us, do we have anything that you want God to do for us? Some of us have 30, some of us have 20, some of us have 10, some of us have just one peculiar thing that we are asking God for. True of us. True. We all have one thing. As our faces are different, so our needs and what are different. Stay connected to the vine if you want breakthrough in that area of your life. If you want success, if you want testimony, if you want that miracle, stay connected to the vine. The psalmist says, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, The Lord will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in the world. In the Lord. In the Lord. It is God that leads a man. It is God that makes men. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Build a relationship with God. Stay connected to the vine, especially we as believers. There are people who are not Christians, who are not believers, they are successful in their various ventures. It's true because they follow the, the right principles. They did the right thing. They put in hard work. They learned. They connect with the right people and all of that. But we are bringing this down to ourselves as believers. God is first. Build a relationship with God. Stay connected to God. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you that which you want, you desire. The second one, how do you get virtue? Seek God's kingdom first. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33 said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what added to you. Seek God's kingdom first. And everything that you desire will, will be added unto you. The third one I said, be thankful. Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be 
anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known to God. Don't be an ungrateful child of God. Don't be an ungrateful person. There's a saying in my language that says, when you thank God, then he will do more. He will do more for you. Be thankful. Have a heart of thanksgiving. Thank God for the one that he has done. Before you start requesting for another. Some of us, when we need them to pray, all we do is ask, 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 and ask, and ask, and ask the Lord. Take time to sincerely thank God for the ones that he has, he has done. Be thankful. The fourth one says persistent prayer. Luke 18 verse 1. If you want breakthrough, you must persist in prayers. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart or faint. Prayer is very necessary in this regard. The world is wicked. The world is evil. It takes a prayerful man to be successful. There are people who don't want you to succeed. There are people who, even your steps on the ground, annoys them. They don't want to see you. But you know what? If you are a man of prayer, then you will overcome all of this. Persistent prayer. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Ah, I've been praying, I've been praying. It's not happening. It's not. Keep on praying. Until you get the breakthrough, you don't, you don't stop praying. You keep on praying until you break through. Persistent prayer. And the fifth one I said, fasting and prayer. Mark chapter 9 verse 29. Jesus told the disciples, this kind cannot go except by fasting and prayer. They were casting out, they were bending out, they were trying to set free, it was not working. And Jesus came and told them that this kind, they asked Jesus, why don't we do this thing that you are doing? He said, this kind one, this type, cannot go out except by what? Prayer and fasting. The next one I said, have faith for a breakthrough. You must build your faith. Mark 11 verse 24, please. Therefore I said to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them and you will have them. That's faith. Believe. Not after praying, you go back and start crying. Ah, I think it will be done. You have just finished praying. And this is you crying again and asking God, the same God that you pray to, I think it will be done. Build your faith. Build your faith. Believe. Let's see Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 17 verse 20. Them because of your own belief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, see, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So, the man of faith, nothing is impossible for such a man. Build your faith in God. And the next one I said, Stay in God's will for your life. First John 5, verse 4. Stay in God's will for your life. Know the will of God for you and stay in God's will. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Stay in God's will for your life. In God's will for your life, as you are busy doing God's will for your life, God will be busy doing that which also what concerns you. And the last one I said, patiently trust and wait on God for your breakthrough. Last week we saw the waiting room. Patiently trust and wait on God for your breakthrough. Hebrews 6 verse 12. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Through faith and patience. You must patiently wait. Trust God for your breakthrough. Whatever it is that you desire, whatever breakthrough that it is that you desire from God, you must learn to patiently wait on God for that breakthrough. My time cannot be your time. Your time cannot be my time. Every man has a date with destiny. Every man has his or appointed time. So you must learn to wait on that appointed time for your life. 
It is lack of patience that make people try to want to help God to help themselves. And it is not possible. You cannot help God. Because men cannot wait. People cannot wait. They try to, they think they can actually help God to help themselves. It is only God that can lift a man. Patiently trust and wait on God for your breakthrough. We see people, because of our time, people who went from set back to bounce back. We saw Obededon Jabez. Jabez was a man who was born with sorrow, but he prayed, Oh God, enlarge my coast, change my life. And did God hear his prayer? Yes, and his life changed. Though he was born with sorrow, but the Bible says there was a time that his brethren came to him to beg him. Somebody that was driven away from the family because he prayed. We saw the widow of Zarephath, obedience. She obeyed God, the servant of God. Do this. She obeyed God. Nothing to eat in the house. Not, we don't have anything. Man of God said, you make me cake first. Let me eat. She obeyed. And what happened? She had more than enough. Because the servants of God were released blessings upon her. We saw Naaman. We saw Elizabeth. These are people who went from set back to bounce back because they obeyed, they obeyed the voice of, the, of God through God's servant. What is God telling you to do? Through his servant. We saw how one of our pastors testified last week that the servant of God gave a word and she acted on the word. And what happened? She got her, her testimony. If she had neglected the word of the man of God, would she have gotten that testimony? No. The enemies plan would have prevailed over her. So what is God speaking to you in regards to that situation, in regards to that breakthrough that you desire? Maybe that your simple obedience is what will bring that miracle that you have long been waiting for. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. In conclusion, there cannot be a breakthrough without divine intervention. Therefore, you must turn to God for help if you desire a breakthrough in any dimension of your life. Can we quickly see Deuteronomy 8 verse 18? That's the last place I will read and call it a day. Okay. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. It is not shift. That he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So whenever we say on Sunday church, I can't come, I have shifts. It's not shifts that will make you have weight. If you like, pack thousands of shifts. Remember the Lord your God, for it is who? God, who gives you power to do what? To get weight. That he may establish his covenant, which is what to your fathers. In as much as we have our role to play, it is God that gives the power to make work. So you must learn to remember the Lord your God and put him first in all that you do. And I pray that God will help us and bless this words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Let God celebrate God. Let's celebrate God. Bless you, man of God. That was detailed. That was detailed. We can do better for